Hey guys, so today I am working on something that I picked from the thrift store. I scored this tray for a dollar, one dollar. I'm sure it's just like silver coated, but I love silver and I love the patina, so I picked it up. And it had feet, but the feet are broken off, but you can see I paid one dollar for this piece. So I cleaned the inside really well, and my plans are, um, I think I'm just gonna paint the inside and leave the silver on the outside because I love it and then we're gonna do some decoupage. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycled Treasures. Let's get started. So for today's project, you guys, I wanted to use one of my new designs that were just released. Um, this is one of them and it's a project block, but it's two big project blocks. So you have, I love these um, dragonfly wings on this form, but I'm actually going to be using this side um, for this project. I think it'll make a really nice base um, on this silver tray. You can either layer like a wreath on there if you hang it up on the wall or we can, I don't know, I think once we get it decoupaged, we can probably do multiple things. So um, I'm not going to cut this sheet because I used my dress form on another project and I already have this one cut. So we're going to decoupage this on here. But before we decoupage, you guys, let's um, get a nice base down and get this painted first. And I want to reserve that patina on the edge of that. So I'm going to be really super careful. So I'm just using some white to wise out chalk synthesis paint is what I'm using to paint the inside of this. And it doesn't have to be perfect um, because we're going to decoupage over it anyways. But I do want it um, to be laid down really nicely. So I have this all painted, you guys. I painted just a solid white to give you a nice bright base. And I'm going to be using... Um, this paper to decoupage and um there's kind of a lot of grungy on this paper and i want to make sure and keep some of that so i just have to figure out um you know where i want it to start and stop so um, i'm even only going to use half of this sheet for this project so i'm going to go ahead and trim this half off and i will save this for another day and so um, to decoupage this, I'm going to lay it in here, you guys, and I'm going to kind of score around here just to give myself an idea of how the paper is going to lay on here. Um, not necessarily to um, to cut it, although I am going to trim some of this extra paper off. Um, this is just going to let me know like where the paper lays on the tray, but I'm still going to overcut. I'm going to trim it, but not perfectly. Um, cause I can come back in with a razor blade later and just really cut that perfectly. And so I'm just going to trim some of this extra paper off. And again, I'm not trying to trim it perfectly. I'm actually over cutting about half an inch all the way around. I have a song in my head today, you guys. Bye bye. It's a miracle It's my own fault too. It's my own doing. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. And now you have a song stuck in your head. <laughs> I don't want to be alone. Okay, so this is all trimmed. And now we can start decoupage. Why am I so excited about this project? I think it's going to be super cute. Look. So... Um, this is a big enough project that I'm going to do it in sections. Um, so I have here my Wise Owl One Hour Enamel is what I want to use for today's project. I'm debating, can you tell? I'm thinking that I might use my Funkature and DIY top coat because it's marine grade and I haven't quite made a decision about what I'm going to do with this tray. So in the event that I want to use it as an actual tray, I'm going to go with the marine grade top coat for this decoupage project. And so um, I'm going to do a quick decoupage on this, you guys. I've done a ton of decoupage videos, and I have several that are like really um, detailed step by step. 
And if you guys want to see those videos, you can find them um, here. We'll make sure and put you the link out below as well so you can get to that playlist. If you guys like the tutorials that we do here on this channel, be sure and subscribe. You don't want to miss any videos. If you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert of when we upload new videos, which is generally once a week. So I'm going to grab some of my rusty, my um, trusty um, saran wrap. I use saran wrap because it reduces friction significantly so that I'm less likely to tear my tissue paper. And it really allows me to manipulate my paper so I can work out um, the bulk of those wrinkles. Now, the small wrinkles that I have here will disappear as the paper dries and it shrinks. So I'm really just wanting to make sure that I don't have any large wrinkles and that there's really good contact between my paper and the surface. Now that my paper is adhered, <laughs> we're gonna let this dry completely and then um, we'll come back and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna use my razor blade um, to trim this piece. So now that our tray, our decoupage is all dry, we can trim this. And so I just have a simple X-Acto knife. You guys, I got these at the thrift store. So they're like old school. I love them. They're super sharp. Um, when you're trimming your decoupage paper, there's two things that you want to make sure that you do. Um, one is you want to make sure that your paper is dry. Um, and two, you want to make sure that whatever you're using is super sharp if you want to get a nice clean edge. And I'm just kind of laying my knife to the side and feeling my way to the edge. Um, I do have portions of my paper that's not tacked down, which is an optimum. Um, so you want to make sure your paper is tacked down all the way too. That makes it a lot easier. Especially when you're working on something with an irregular edge like this one. And I'm actually using the edge to guide my blade as I cut around. And you guys can see how um, a super sharp blade would be important. Because I don't want to have to go back over and cut. I mean, if I have to, I'll go back in and cut a second time. But I really don't want to have to. Um, because then I, I you know, risk having like a double cut, which would not be optimal. So I'm putting a significant amount of pressure on here as I go around. And if it's not super perfect, like, you know, we're crafters, we'll figure it out, right? And there we go. So I'm just going to take my um, small brush. I have some places around the edge that weren't tacked down really well. So I'm gonna go back in and tack those. I'm gonna trim this a little bit closer to where that actually is. And you guys see how my blade is sharp enough for me to be able to do that. And then um, I have some white paint that's kind of showing. Let's take that off first. Cause I don't wanna have to put black paint on here, but I could and I may still do that. I could put like um, just some black paint all the way around the edge to hide that white or I could get rid of it. But I think I kind of like the idea of the black paint so let's do that. But let me tack down my edges first. Um, I'm going to be using some Wise Owl varnish for this one. Um, you guys see me using these bottles a lot. I love storing my products in these bottles because I can just squeeze out what I need for each project and it's less wasteful and um, I don't like to dip my brushes in my cans or bottles of product because um, you can deposit like dirt, debris, or even bacteria into your paint and then when you close it away and store it, you risk ruining your product. And I'm just sliding my brush underneath the edge of my paper just to make sure that everything is tacked down really well. And then once everything is tacked down, then I'm gonna go over and um, I'm actually gonna seal my entire um, decoupage piece. 
Now, if you guys enjoy tutorials that we do here weekly at Recycled Treasures, be sure and subscribe. If you hit the bell that you see there, you'll actually get a notification of when we upload a new video. And there we have it. I'm probably going to go around and just um, draw, or not draw, do like a soft paint line of black all the way around the edge just for some drama. But this is pretty much my message board. I'll glue a hook onto the back of this. But you guys are probably like, what can you do with that voice? Well, um, maybe I'll do another tutorial and we'll make some magnets. But these are just pieces of... Um, resin molds that I've made that I have kind of in my stash these would be super cute just put a magnet on the back of this and then you can use this on this board right um, or even like a crown I think a crown will be super cute as a magnet for this specific board um, maybe even locks and keys um, which kind of lend to the steampunk vibe a little bit so um, if you guys have molds like in your craft stash, then you can make custom magnets to go on your custom magnet board. I think that's super fun. But thank you guys so much for joining us for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something new or you're inspired to make something yourself. You guys can absolutely make you guys can do anything that I did here today, right? So you guys can do this. You can do it today. Um, if you're looking for any of the things I used today, you guys can find them at recycle.com. But other than that, we'll see you next time. Have a blessed day.